This is the Riot Podcast for Friday. Woo! Hallelujah. End of the week. Yes. Hudson, this is I was it. talking to him yesterday, and he was like, well, this is kind of like the first real, like, long week into the end of January, um, because almost every other week has had something where you've had a day off or something like that. So it's been a really long week, because we had work five days. Forever. <laughs> like, it's just gone on forever. And it felt really long. All right. Well, you know what? Uh... We'll try to make the podcast short for you. <laughs> yeah, we'll just hopefully you'll enjoy it. In this, we were so excited to catch up with Tom from Archer's Rise. Yes. And that includes a chance for you to hear new music from them on Radio U. So check out RadioU.com or a free Radio U app. If you're normally just a podcast listener and you want to hear the music that goes with our podcast, that's available there. All right. So here's what I got for you. Nutella... F- fights are a thing in France. Uh, we talk about movie pass, maybe... I don't want to say it's the beginning of the end, but it's a crack. It it is the what I feel like is the first crack in the system since it's become a nine ninety five thing. Uh, the XFL, Oprah says no. Uh, Zach and I. There's more. We oh estate sales. There you yep. go. What's going to happen at the end of the world? It's a lot of fun. Lots of good stuff. So enjoy the podcast. Don't forget our interviews, including Archer's Rise, is also up at Radio U Riot on Facebook or our YouTube channel. If you follow us there too. Yeah, and what a great, what great talking to him. But what a great song. Like it's really good. You should check it out. It's playing on Radio. Makes U us now. sad you can't hear music on the. Podcast. I know on the podcast. We wish we could do that, but, but we, we can't. Only, we can only sing it to you, but that's it, and we're not going to do that. Yeah, like that would be more than doing you a disservice. Well, it ruin the song too. It would ruin the song, and we don't want to do that. <laughs> so check out Radio U, like we mentioned, and that'll fix it. <laughs> yep, you guys enjoy it. Have a great weekend. Bye. The worst of the riot box set is now available nowhere because we know you wouldn't want it anyway. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Now, yesterday we asked the question, what are you having for breakfast? Or was that two days ago? Uh, oh, that's yesterday? a good question. Boy, was that yesterday? The question is, what yesterday. day did we ask the question? <laughs> uh, no, so a lot of people responded yesterday and I appreciated all the responses that we got because some of you are eating very well. Some of you are... Not, and I mean not eating and or not eating well. We we saw both of those popping up. Uh, but the question I need to ask you this morning is, uh, is there any Nutella left? Because I am fascinated and have been for the last little bit about what's going on in France right now. Now, a lot of people talk about Europe like they're the, the best. And here in the United States, we're just a bunch of fat pig animals. <laughs> don't know how to live. Don't know what to do. Well, when you say it that way. <laughs> <laughs> Look at Black, you don't have to look any farther than Black Friday to see that we're animals. But in, you know, in Europe, this would never happen because people have everything they want. So they don't have to rush out on Black Friday. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Nutella riots that are currently happening right now at grocery stores all over France. So do I take it they're having a shortage or something? Or No, they're having a big markdown. A big sale. They're having a big sale on Nutella. There is a chain of stores that was offering a 70% discount on Nutella. It's actually a pretty good deal. That was bringing the price down from about, uh, what would be about $5 US to about $1.50. So that caused a rush? Rioting. Screaming, punching, climbing over each other, blood. People grabbing as many Once cans as they could. blood. It was Nutella. <laughs> no, no, no. There was a lady that was bloody. She was bleeding from it? From the Nutella. Aw. Mm-hmm. Well, so, guys, what's that about? I just love it because, again, everybody goes really hardcore on us here in the United States about Black Friday. Look at these lines. Look at whatever. And you know what? I present to you Nutella, which, you know, it's. It's pretty it's good, good, but it's not like that good. It's pretty good. We only cause havoc if it's for usually electronics or a better deal. I mean, admittedly, I would rather have TV, uh, a TV, than some Nutella. Unless, of course, I'm starving and I'm waiting in a ration now, line for days. if you were in a household where that was, you know, like that was a part of your everyday meal... Mm-hmm. Like every day, you had like our peanut butter. If you had a peanut butter sale, that was so good. You know what? I'll tell you what you, you really go. want is you want some Nutella on that peanut butter. That's, that's like, what you do. Like the peanut butter is really good, but you put some Nutella on that and you've actually, the level to which you've elevated it is shocking. Now, what if, track with me here, we're always looking at the ways to maybe make a little bit more money. You go to Costco, grab some of the big ones, 
and then fly him over to you've France. All, I'm sure you've wanted to see France before. Always wanted to see France. If you can get through customs, you could sell those for a pretty big amount of money. No way, because then obviously Nutella is so hard to get in France that I would end up in some sort of a like... Holding I, salad yeah, when you get into like, the country. <laughs> so you seem to want whatever. Like, here's your bag. And they give you back your bag and all the Nutella is gone. <laughs> and they, and they're eating it all. That's exactly right. You go by and you're like... Why does it smell like hazelnut spread in here? <laughs> Get out, American. <laughs> you're going back. You're not allowed in. You're not coming to this country. Well, it was just an idea in case someone, you know, like you try to, to you know, buy something someone else can't get easily and you just go sell it. I think it's a fantastic idea. Like, I'm willing to explore the space, but I'll just tell you, you're going to have to hire some armed guards because once people find out you have Nutella, apparently they're willing to do anything to get it, especially if you're selling it at a discount. Having a bad day? Blame the riot. Everyone else does. And in fairness, it's probably their fault. Radio U. Hey, uh, I don't know what your plans are 4th of July this year. I know that uh, there's been some discussions about me making maybe a return trip to Oregon, which, oh my gosh, we're going to be talking to Tom from Archer's Rise coming up later this morning. He's in Oregon. He's in Oregon. You see how it works perfectly? It's all tying together. Dude, I'm so excited. We get to play new music from Archer's Rise mm-hmm. later when we have a chance to catch up with them. Mm-hmm. I I will tell you that on my way here in the car this morning, via the Bluetooth on my phone, I was listening to that song already. It's that good. I couldn't wait until we played it. I had to play it. <laughs> That's perfectly fine. Great, great music. So if you hopefully can stick around with us, if not, we'll post that later through Radio You Riot on YouTube and our Facebook page. If you go ahead and follow and subscribe to us there, you'll get a notification for it. Now, back to the 4th of July plans that I'm not going to need. Uh, it turns out, according to some people, the world is going to end on June 24th, 2018. So we don't have to. Yeah, But it's we go great. do this every year. Canceling the 4th of July? No, like they'll give you a date where I'm sure things must end by. Like by and, this time. and then you're like, well, I, we won't plan, but now here we still are. So the thing that gets me, it's one of those things where like, you know what? After a while, what you've just said, I've got Armageddon fatigue. You know, it's like the world's going to end on this day and you're like, oh, crap. I thought we already did this. Did yeah, we already, we already this? went through all this. All right. So at least you know, I believe you, you get someone who says something Every year. I haven't paid the credit card bills off since last time. Cause <laughs> yeah, I didn't was, think I had to. I ran everything up because I was like, man, just I'm going out with a bang. And then it was like, wait a minute. Nothing happened. Must be in a different time zone. I don't We're know. fine. You, you get some people uh, who will be like, well, they'll be very specific. Like, this is the date. It's going to happen for sure. You then you feel like, well, I don't need to pay that off, that sort of thing. And then you get others each year that are like, well, we're destined to be doomed sometime this year. Like, we must not make it past it, but they're very generic with it. Yeah. You know what? We should have, like, parties. Like, because it seems like it would be, like, a once-a-year party because, again, it, it seems like every year there's one new date that we're not going to make it. So we should just go ahead, have ourselves a party, and every year, of course, the date's going to be different, and it's an end of the world party. Don't you eat at the end of the world parties the 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 party packs, the big food, the tubs, the uh, you know? I'm not, the, I'm not getting it. I'm sorry. You're not going to get any of those. No, no, no. I don't know what you mean. The big like the, um oh tr- tubs of food. chicken. No, food? like the oh end of my the year, gosh, the oh the my things. gosh, you're right. <laughs> what are those called? I know Preppers. what you mean. The like prepper, the prepper basket, it. those sort of thing. It's like a painting bucket or something, and it's like filled with mac and cheese. Oh my gosh! <laughs> like do you realize? Do you realize that you act like you just made the most amazing themed Armageddon party ever? You have to eat the food. So you just watch movies about the end of the world, but people aren't watching them. They're just on in the background because obviously they're on ironically. And then you're only preparing like prepper food, and those are the kind of snacks and stuff that you have. Yeah. And then no one's allowed to use your bathroom. They have to use those prepper buckets that they're like, hey, these are good bathrooms for 100 years. Perfect. Dude, That's the party. I love that so much. Come to my Armageddon prepper party. <gasps> and then if the world doesn't end, it could be like a tax write-off because you're an Armageddon prepper business now. And you ate the food and you have the stuff. I love it so much. We're doing, we're not doing it because it I will mean, take we're not, effort. That, and that stuff is expensive because yeah, it's, it's like such a big quantity. Yeah, it's like $600 for a big thing. We'll, we'll pass on that. They're like, would you like food for a year? You're like, like, but I don't want to buy it now. This is five years worth of food. <laughs>
five years. I mean, I can see about having a couple of snacks and just having a few canned items, but I, I can't I can't store that. Yeah, I hear you. You don't have to apologize unless you've done something wrong. Well, I'm sorry. I can't even think straight right now. This is the worst of the riot. We're very, very sorry. You guys do know that uh, eventually we're going to be dead. Yeah, the show's a little bit of a downer. We've talked into the world, and now we're talking death, but... Dude, I don't even know. I do not even know how I got here. But uh, through a series of links and whatever's on the internet, I'm now at estatesales.org. Nikki, it's eBay, but everybody's dead. Oh, estate sales. So when they're selling your, you know, like say someone passes away in your family and they have a house full of items. Stuff. So it's like a big, it's a big estate sale. It is what what it is. is. (laughs) And so I'm looking at it and it's just like it. It actually makes me want to go home and just throw everything away. Because you don't want people to have to sell your stuff. Because. Are you embarrassed that when you die, if if you're like, well, we had to sell all those Funko Pops. <laughs> hey, let's be clear. How many of those do I have? Me have three. three. So you're good. Three Funko Pops. All right. Three does not make an estate sale. It does not. But I'm looking at this and this is like, this is what it's going to look like when I'm dead. There are three tables that are full of DVDs and Blu-rays. On, uh, on one of those? Then this guy's got a box of VHS even. Mm. This is what... I guess I always thought an estate tw- sale was, you know, old furniture or jewelry or something. I, me too, but it's it's that it and It can be this. anything? It's all of that. Like, it's all these things right here. Like, this is where I'm headed. Plus little pewter cat statues. Well, who doesn't want to collect those? And apparently... This chair, which is the chair they sat in while they watched all these VHS, DVD, and Blu-ray movies. This is so. weird. And I wonder, okay, here's like a, a a sale word, like a lot, L-O-T, like are you buying the whole lot? Mm-hmm. And then that their stuff is yours. What is weird stuff? Yeah, well. What's the snake thing? I That freaks me out. Huh. Why, why do they have a ceramic snake? That's almost... It's not as weird as owning a real one, but it's still pretty weird. <laughs> you do not want to miss this amazing sale. We'll be oh. adding our sneak peek picture shortly, so stay tuned. We'll have an adult-only area where don't, ID will be required. Don't scroll down. Don't look at they it. They have pictures of that. What, is it? what could it possibly be? I don't want to look. I don't want to okay, look. Okay, Nikki, did you ever go to those stores where they had the saloon doors? Yeah. Okay. Wait, what do you mean saloon doors? <laughs> where you go to the video uh, store and, and then, the then they had the yeah. saloon doors. They also have a, a chicken for outside. Not a real one, but oh. boy, this stuff is... Well, I'm sure it was very important to them. I'll just tell you, looking at this, what you can do is you can actually, I went ahead and kept going and I started looking at estate sales in our area. Yeah. So I'll tell you, I got a couple lined up. If after the show today, if you want to go do a little bidding. There's a polar bear set of plates. This stuff is just, now I mean this nicely, but I'd say this even about my own stuff. This stuff is just junk. I know, but you know what? Why don't they just give it away? But that's what I'm starting to realize, Nikki, is that... all own junk. All of that stuff that I have is junk. I have a bunch of junk, so we should, you know, look into getting rid of it somehow. Like, maybe now. I think it's called donating or the dump, so... Okay. Like, that might... Is anybody using the radio U-Van? I could fill it. (laughs) That's the one that we use. We have this old radio U-Van. We have a newer one, and then we have the old one. We're like, well, should we get rid of it? And you're like, nah. I mean, what if someone moves? Because when someone we moves, we always need it. Yep, so, we need it. And that includes trips to the dump with trash if you're if you're moving and you need it. Mm-hmm. So I just I can fill it. I've got trash. Well, I don't want to add more, so I do not want to go estate sale ing. But what if there's good stuff? No, we're good. We're just gonna wrap on mine. Okay, at All least right. based off what I just saw, nothing good. It's like trinkets. I know it's crap. This is the kind of stuff I buy. So I'm trying to learn something right now. Pretty soon, Mike. <laughs> hey, what's that? This is Ebenezer. This is the ghost of Christmas future. Like yeah. you are to not buy anything else. If I'm not careful, I could end up with this: stacks of books, DVDs, and movies, and, and weird trinkets. Sale. <laughs> I like. That, that's where I'm headed. I have I to stop now. I think we've been we've been warned. I have, and you know what? I'm glad that we looked. Your morning, but without yelling, laughing, or music. Don't deprive me of that. We wouldn't dream of it. It's the riot on Radio U. So I used my movie pass yesterday, and I just find myself thinking every time I use it. One, I feel like I'm getting away with something, which I'm not. I'm paying for it. It's not free, but it feels free when I use it. 
And then I just kept thinking, this can't last. Don't enjoy it too much. Because the price will just go up somehow? It's not. It can't last. It mm-hmm. just can't. And lo and behold, what happens this morning? I come to this fine establishment, open this lovely laptop, begin using this nice piece of software, begin perusing this website, and behold, Movie Pass is now not allowing access to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different amc locations now this is the start it's the beginning it's friends. like a snowball when it Dun. starts small and then it rolls and rolls and rolls and you on the end get smacked with it and you don't get to have fun anymore so here are the locations now they don't affect me but they might someday empire 25 in new york city century city 15 and universal city walk in la aka the universal city walk that's where Universal Cities or Universal Studios, Studios. Uh, LA is. Um, Lowe's Boston Common 19, River East 21 in Chicago, Disney Springs at Walt Disney World, and Lowe's Alderwood Mall in Washington. Now, the- if I can guess, it seems like some of the more high profile locations, and that's probably why they're saying no to it. They are the some of the most expensive AMC theaters in the United States. And not only are the most expensive, but the busiest. And they don't want you movie pass people. In other Filling words, up the seats, not giving more money. Well, what's interesting is AMC released a statement and said, Ooh, it's not us. We didn't do that. That, like, you guys have to take your complaints to movie pass. And the speculation is that these are loss leaders for movie pass, that these are locations that they are just losing a ton of money on. And they have just decided not to cut to off access anymore. to it. Mm-hmm. So do we know? Is it AMC? Is it MoviePass? I think it probably is MoviePass. I think at some point they were just like, all right, look. Not worth it. We can't. The only hope I have is that when I go to the movies, I've been going on like, like I went yesterday, Thursday at 3.30 in the afternoon. Me and two other people saw a movie. That's... They might have been movie pass people as well. You need to go in and be like, hey, and hey, then flash your card. Just out of curiosity. Anybody else in here Who wasting else is time on a movie with pass? this? And everybody else is like, eh. Yeah, we're just seeing a movie. <laughs> Us too. Whatever. It's a thing. So I, I just, my hope is because I go at crappy times and I, it's a nice theater, as Nikki will say, with a very bad parking lot, but still, it's a nice well, theater. Other parts could be updated too, but. All right, the, the theater itself, like the seats are fine. The seats are good. The screen is fine. And and the audio is great. And then so, that's about it. Th- that's good enough. And I mean, they didn't question me when I was obviously sneaking in my bag of Reese's Pizzas Isn't that, that I picked nice? up. nice? I appreciate some movie theaters you go to and they search your bag, they search you. And then this one, they're like, oh, just come on in. The lady at the front barely even noticed I was coming in. <laughs> Like, fine, whatever. And I'm just like, well, movie pass isn't shutting this place down. <laughs> they don't care. Well, I'm glad you got to use it. I know you, you want to feel like you're seeing enough well, movies to make it worth it. My movie pass goal is once per week. And so far, um, I've done okay. I'm probably like four for six weeks. So two thirds. Hey, if you were getting, you know, like a 66. No, that's not good enough. I was going to say, if you're getting a 66% on that paper, you'd be happy. But. No, you're going to need to aim need a little to do higher. better than that. You're going to have to aim higher than that. The part that keeps me up at night, we paid them for this. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. Radio, 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 Radio. So the big announcement, Nikki, I don't know if you heard, but it's time for this country to make football great again. Vince McMahon is going to do that for you. Vince McMahon is the man behind the NFL. Just kidding. No. <laughs> the WWE. I was going to say, I don't think that was right. And he's decided that it's time to bring back the XFL. You'll note it's not the 10FL. But the XFL? Mm-hmm. When so, was that or what was that? Back in 2001, the XFL had one season. It was a joint venture between the WWE and NBC, and it tanked big time. So why not bring it back? Well, you know, Nikki, ratings for the NFL are down. People are trying to fill that void if they decided they don't want to watch the NFL anymore. Yeah. Here's what what I love is in the press conference yesterday, somebody asked him, like, you know, is this uh, reaction to all the national anthem protests happening in the NFL? His response is as follows. As far as our league is concerned, it will have nothing to do with politics and nothing to do with social issues. 
There's plenty of opportunities and plenty of ways that players, coaches, and members of the media can express themselves, but we're here to play football. That's refreshing. Somebody somewhere was like, yeah! (laughs) That's nice. But keep in mind that this is the XFL that was like, we're taking you into the cheerleader locker room. As long as it's not that. that Come on. That was. <laughs> yeah, that's what that's going to be. What they tried to do with the original XFL. They had Maybe all they that won't. stuff. Something tells me they're going to try to pass this off as a slightly more highbrow thing. Another thing the XFL was really well known for was no coin toss. They would put a football on the 50 yard line. Then First they, one who gets it goes. Yep, they would have two players lined up, 30 yard dash to the football. Now, you got two guys sprinting right at each other. How do you think that turned out? Not really well. They had to stop doing that because there were too many injuries just from the opening grab for the ball. So, Also, the league is really well known for a player who, rather than referring to himself by name, he wrote the phrase, he hate me, on the back of his jersey. That was his you name that he went by? Yeah. He did. Well, maybe it'll be different. You know, I, like times have gone past, it's changed, and maybe their marketing's like, no, we got to do this. And- well, you know, as I recall, the XFL started up at, at least way back in the day. I thought that was like a, their thing was like it happened after the NFL. So like when the NFL was done, the XFL started playing. It so wasn't the, running at the same time? Yeah. So the idea is like you're desperate for football. There's no college football. Professional football's over. Canadian football has ended. So what do you do to fill this football-sized hole in your life? And the XFL, they think, could be that. I actually think you're right, Nikki. I think that... If they cleaned it up and made it, you know, production-wise, a little bit more like the NFL... They were trying to bring the, what was, turn-of-the-century WWE uh, aesthetic into football. That didn't work. But I think if they brought a certain something... Actual football. I think you could do it. Yeah. And they say their other thing they want to change about the game is the games will last two hours. What they do want they to, last now? Longer? Like three and a half, four. Oh, yeah, way too long. Five. Unless it's your team and you like it and you don't mind. This goes but on and on and on forever. all the other games, you got to end it a little earlier. I kind of like the idea of a faster-paced, faster game. Yeah. I mean, I don't know how they're going to accomplish that, and I don't believe they explained it yesterday, but uh, they say the XFL return in 2020. So... You've got time. Little do they know, Nikki and I found out this morning that the world ends in June of this year. Maybe so. we'll never have a chance to see it. But, you know, you got to do something while you're waiting for the world to end, so you might as well plan your football league so just they, in case. Will they have a league, like, with different... Eight teams. Eight teams across the United States? Uh-huh. So maybe we could get one. There's a few high school stadiums around here. Oh, don't be mean. One of the only things left that isn't owned by Disney. The Riot on Radio U. Nikki, I don't know if you've heard, but Oprah Winfrey, who gave a speech and everybody was like, let's make her Caesar. I mean, (laughs) president. (laughs) Um, Is not wanting to run. She says she's out. She's not going to run for president. So um, I'll tell you what that leaves. That leaves an opportunity. For a female? For another female broadcaster that I think actually may have exactly what this country is looking for. That could be me. Someone who is sensitive, someone who is strong, someone who can listen, but someone who is also smart enough to not go with whatever someone says. I could also just make you think I'm listening to you, which is very important. You want to feel like someone's listening. Someone who is surrounded by a lot of people with a lot of strong opinions, but is strong enough to go the way she knows to be right. They can say no to oppression and yes to freedom. Do you know anyone like this? I do. that's right. I don't want to go into politics, though. I, I want you to be president, stress. Nikki. I want you to be president. No. And I want to be the... That can ruin someone. The chief of pastry. <laughs> well, so that's a different type of president. It'll be my job to search this country <laughs> in search of the best pastries to bring back to the White House for you. It's like when I'm going on the campaign trail, I'm like, not only are you getting me, but you're getting that man over there. Who will bring more pastries to more people than ever before. <laughs> not as my vice Vice president, but uh, he'll get some other position. Nikki's legacy to the country will be the creation of a new cabinet position, the Secretary of Pastry. <laughs> I love it. Like I think it have, works for you. I'll tell you right now. If Oprah Winfrey could get elected I, and everybody was so excited, you haven't had a chance to give a speech yet. True. You know what I'm saying? You so, I mean, you, guys you don't give know that speech. what I could bring to the table. Could blow people away. But um, I don't want the stress. 
Oh. I don't Wait. like politics. Did you say you don't want the dress? The stress. Oh, okay. That's different. Sure. So, well. Because the, during the campaign show, they'd pull up everything I said on this show. <laughs> everything. <laughs> you know, a lot of things get taken out of context. I know, but I don't want to be there for that. <laughs> a lot of things do. So, well, all right. You know what? It's fine if it's not something that you're interested in. But I think you'd be great. I think a lot of people would like you. I mean, there's going to be a couple people that don't like you, but that's just politics. And I don't do well with that. I like everybody to like me. And it, it's very, I take things personally, which means I'd be crushed if I was president. How about this? You stand up and you're like, you know, the Senate majority leader. Oh, I try not to cry. Oh, my gosh. He's saying things. <laughs> I said that are me. He's saying things that, you know what, guys? Like, I totally didn't do that. And, like, that's not really fair. Is that, do you think that would be weird if the president was crying? <laughs> well, there are a lot of people that would get angry because they're like, president can't show weakness. But let me tell you what, you would win every fight. Because from then forward, it would be like, don't. Because what would happen is everybody would be like, who? Who is who this? this? Who made President Nikki cry? <laughs> who? Was it you? And then Guess who's finally, never getting elected again ever? Then we'd finally get some stuff to move and right. get some stuff done. You could just get up there and be like, guys, I really want this to make it through Congress because I promised myself I wouldn't. I promised the American people I wouldn't. <laughs> Please vote for this measure. Thank you. Okay. Well, maybe not somebody the, bring in the pastry, the chief the pastry, pastry guy. Chief. Bring him in here. I need something with cherry in it right now. <laughs> not filling real cherries. The riot talks about wanting a day off, but when do we get a day off from them? Whoa, you suck at this. It's the worst of the riot on Radio U. It is the riot on Radio U. I am it, so excited. Well, you know I. I've said this. I am going to say a bunch of stuff I've said a million times, but it feels like it's been a while. It has, but it but legitimately it has, been. has been. But then on the other hand, it seems like time, you know, like it. nothing has passed, though. When you finally get to hear new Archer's Rise music, you're like, oh, yeah, you just feel like it's never went away. It's almost like we've been walking with them the whole time. Oh, it's nice with the song title. That's right. <laughs> Love that. That's Love right. That. On nice the phone, plug. Tom from Archer's Rise. Good morning, Good sir. Good morning. How are you? So good, you guys. I, can I just say I love you guys? We love except you too. for one thing. What? One thing. Yikes. I, I, here here we go. Holding, I'm holding a grudge against Obadiah. Oh, you know good. why? Woo. Because <laughs> that's what people do? No. <laughs> no, it's because you visited Oregon without oh, giving me a call. Yes, uh, okay, so yes. you know what? Inside baseball talk, where do you live in Oregon? Uh, so I live in Portland now. Oh, see, I get. I got lucky. I flew from Eugene into Colorado, and I threw a party for myself because I didn't land in Portland. <laughs> Dude, Eugene is terrible. But okay, cool. Hey, listen. I'm but not... it's closer to where he ends right. up to go visit family out there, so he wasn't. That's cool. I guess that makes up for it. It does. We're but too close. Wait, I, here's what I want to know. Like, while we're on this hot Oregon talk with Archer's Rise. <gasps> Ask about the gas. <laughs> Oh, gosh. That is so overhyped, you guys. So overhyped. You have to explain it, Obi. Okay, so the deal is they passed a law in Oregon that in counties right. with less than 40,000 people, mm -hmm. it was now legal for you to pump your own gas, but in with counties of greater than 40,000, you have to have someone else pump your gas in Oregon. Same thing like if you go right. to New Jersey, Same you thing. don't pump yep. your own gas, and an attendant comes out and pumps it for you, and it's very weird. But, Tom, if you live in Portland, you still haven't pumped your own gas then. Well, I mean, I've pumped it in several other occasions, but that is correct. Um, we, we do not pump our own gas, if you can believe it. So how annoyed was the average Portlander when they were <laughs> the national outrage was happening? Um, well, well it, what's interesting is when you see pictures of all the people making fun of <laughs> Oregon, you know, <laughs> people trying to pump their own gas. But so many of those pictures, I was like, wait a minute. Like, there was one picture of some guy taking, um, you know, the hose and putting it on the other side of the car. 
Right. And they were making fun. But that's a normal thing. Like, we do that at Costco all the time. Yeah, you can, other gas you can pump gas on both sides. The hose is long enough. Well. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, wait, why are you I'm guys not, making fun of us for that? Now, Tom, I'm not going to say who, but in this room, someone uh, forwarded the Zoolander. Oh, my gosh. Gas filling so up uh, scene from that movie. <laughs> now, that's just funny. <laughs> that one's funny. <laughs> well, it just, I think it just said, like, meanwhile in Oregon. <laughs> it just shows the guys. Pumping their own gas. That's oh, my it. gosh. It was so yeah, funny, dude. Great. I love that. That's fun stuff. We're talking to Tom from Archer's Rise. Which so, new song starts today yes. on Radio U. It was on the Battle of the Buzz, but now it's graduated already. It has. Uh, and so Walking With Me will be on starting today and, and actually with us just a couple of minutes. And the video starts today also on Radio U TV. Oh, that's so cool. So, that Tom, was so awesome. Thank you, guys. Oh, well, you know, you can thank us with money for gas later or something. <laughs> <laughs> so, man, how has Archer's Rise been? It's been, I think, five years since we've heard new music from you guys. Yeah, it's well, it's been, yeah, four? five, four, 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 five years, years, four okay. years. Okay. Yeah. Um, it's been going really good, to be honest with you. You know, we're all we're all dear friends. We love each other. We just all kind of went in different directions, you know. Uh, we are starting families. Um, we're all still heavily involved in our churches. I'm a youth pastor now, so, and I'm a youth pastor at kind of a bigger church. So that's kind of a new venture for me. Um, high demands, lots of students. And, uh, so it's kind of turned into a, we, we love making music. We love doing it, but it's just probably not like going to be our career mm-hmm. if you would. Sure. And so, um, but we absolutely love it. So we lo- still love putting out music and uh, I'll still play some shows. Um, you know, I've got a couple of shows opening up for like Crowder and, um, you know, we played one with Skillet and we'll, we'll still do some shows here and there. But yeah, it's pretty much just a seasonal thing. Well, I think it's nice because bands nowadays don't feel the pressure that they need to tour all the days of the year. So, but you can oh at goodness. least still stay together and put out music, and hopefully, us fans can support enough that way. Uh, but then that way, I think a lot of bands couldn't do it anymore because it was so hard being on the road. Well, and you guys, the music industry has changed so stinking much since Falling Up. You know, I mean, when I played in Falling Up, we toured nine to ten months out of the year. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's just not feasible for, for a guy like me to do that anymore with a family. And, um, yeah, and the music industry has just changed so much to where now the technology has gotten so good. I don't have to, I don't have to pay $80,000 to make a 10 song record. You know, I can go down and rent a studio and it'll sound just as good. You can pay Tom now the big money to go have him do it for you. Oh gosh. That's another subject. It it makes it possible for, again, like bands that we haven't heard for a while, come back and still put out great stuff. Yeah. It's so, it's really cool. So I, I no hard feelings at all. I love, I love my, you know, everybody that I dealt with in the past, great times and, uh, I'm excited to see where technology and, and this new season well, takes us. I'm just really glad to hear that you don't have any hard feelings for the entire music industry, but one guy <laughs> yeah. swings through your home state and, and we're holding a grudge. <laughs> I, I'm just glad that, you know, all of the room in your heart for grudges, I managed to take all that up. That is an honor. Yeah. Yeah, you know, well, when I saw you take a pic, you, you took a picture on a beach, and I'm like, dude, that's my beach, bro. <laughs> it's like, where are you at? And you didn't call me? <laughs> yeah. Goodness gracious. I know. That so, was... dude, and you know what else is crazy? You're a big Ohio State fan, aren't you? Uh, Yeah. So, dude, my Beavers are playing Ohio State the first game of the year in football this next year. Well, <laughs> now I feel like we need to travel. Someone needs to come to each other and make this oh, happen. <laughs> well, I mean, all I can say we're, is I, we're hope, at your place. I hope it's better than the Ducks, man, because, like... <laughs> Now, easy, guys. Cool. Everybody get easy here. Be I know. Easy. It's all right. And, Tom, right. I'm going to tell you this. I know you know you'd like to see Obi. Next time he comes to Oregon, I can almost guarantee you he still will not visit you. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> Actually, he I'll never tell you, remembers. I'll tell you what. You meet me for some, what do we say, some voodoo donuts or something. Con- you gotta come, you'll got to come. have to come and get me at the airport, take me for donuts, and bring <laughs> me back. Take me back to the airport. Yeah. But sweet. Hey, listen to me. Listen to me right now. I, I'll tell you this. I'm telling you, I promise on my life, voodoo is so overrated. Mm, I've been there. I will take you to. I'll take you to a place called Blue Star Donut. That okay. place is legit. It it costs like ten dollars a donut. Not really, but it's really expensive. <laughs> okay, um, but it's so much better than video. Oh, but you man. are still going to have to get him from the airport. So It's so Portland <laughs> to be like, bro, that's so mainstream. Come and get a real donut. <laughs> well, and you know, the coffee here is unbelievable. We're like the coffee capital of the world, bro. 
I you're t- listen. I I've spent a lot more time in your state than you have any idea. So yes, I I do know this. I do. So you know what we're talking. And the grits just got bigger. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I feel I feel even with the listeners, some of them take offense. Somebody's to that. getting so angry. Everybody, calm down. The music will heal all of it. That's right. That's right. So yeah, he, let's get back to the music. You guys like my song? Is we that love good? it. Oh my gosh, we love it so much, and we love the video as well, which Obi mentioned. You can catch that starting today at Radio UTV. But we love, 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 love it. It is so great. Thank you so much. To be honest with you, you know, I'm I'm kind of a straight shooter. So if I write a song and I'm like, okay, that's just not very good. I mean, I'll, I'll say it. Mm -hmm. Um, I knew like even my producer was like, dude, this is really good. Like he doesn't listen to his music. He doesn't listen to the guys he records all that often, but he was telling me, he's like, dude, I'm bumping this in my car. Just, it's a fun, let your hair down, you know, pop song. It's a little different than like a falling up or old archers rise, but it's just a really fun, really fun, fun song. song. So yeah. I, I, th- I think, I think I was onto something. I, I'm, I'm proud of it. Wait, can we give Tom this? Yeah. Come Let's on. Let's give him some applause. He did <laughs> yeah. a really good job. Yeah. Oh, thank you so much. I We're so excited. It. Riot's future. Two words. Goat farm. Radio U. Now joining us, in the studio, a descending from the sports enclave where he spends the morning doing sports. Zach is here. How's it going, guys? Good. How are you? I'm doing all right. Good. Doing okay. So, Zach, what happened to you? You you live with what, like three or four other guys? I right? live with three or four other guys, and apparently, there's a thing that I was not aware of. Uh, um, you guys might do this too. You can store stuff in your oven. Oh, okay. Like yeah. You use it as a storage. But Stuff. do you yeah. mean that it's like your oven's a refrigerator, so you can put a turkey in there? No, and then like it you don't doesn't... have enough closet space, so you put your stuff in the oven if you don't cook. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, the problem is we do cook. We've never done, we've never put clothes in the oven. Okay. But apparently uh, my roommates, they would put like, you know, unused pizza and unused pizza boxes and stuff. Like they would get stuff from like Domino's. Like, I'm not finished with this and throw it in the oven. <laughs> But normally no, no, they would no, like. Okay, wait, wait, wait. I just, and, I just want to make sure we're it. getting it. And then close so, it. And then would, close oh. it and not, and just like, I'm going to store this for later. I not have, cook it, do anything. It's just an oven so with a pizza box So there's a pizza it. box in there. With some pizza. With pizza in it. Uh-huh. Okay. Now, they do know that the oven is not a refrigerator. Right. Okay. But, it, you know, it's a. Pizza, I feel, it's can an, sit out a bit, don't you think? It's an airtight room. Okay. For the pizza. And it's, you know, it's, and because we have a lot of guys, you know, the fridge can be a little bit packed. Okay. And it's better than leaving it out on the counter, so they say. Is and, it? <laughs> well, you know, you don't want, like, flies or whatever coming around it, so, you know, nothing's going to happen in lot, the oven. I just want you to know that I have so many questions, but I'm not going to say anything. Okay. <laughs> here's so, the, okay, here's so the thing. Tell though. us what happened. So what happened was, now, I am not one of these guys that typically puts a pizza box with pizza in the oven. So I come home one night and turn the oven on, not knowing what's in there. Preheat, good uh, man. Yeah, I preheat it because that's what you do. Um, and then we started smelling something. It was like, you know, they asked, is the oven on? I'm like, yeah, oven's on. We're just preheating for what I'm going to oh, put stuff. and the box was in there. And then after, you know, it goes off, I open the oven to put in my stuff. It's like, what the heck? There's a pizza box in here. And mm. it started uh, smoking, and yeah, what happened? Surprisingly, though, like, it wasn't, like, on fire. Okay. It was just, like... The box was a little burnt, and the pizza was a little crunchy inside, but other than that... It was fine? Well, to be <laughs> surprisingly. So I, I'm looking online, and it looks like leftover pizza in the oven is not an unheard of thing, but it's not a right thing to do. Like, it is not sealed from from germs and stuff, so it can still grow bacteria and things. Um, it's not sealed off from, like, the rest of the world that way, but you don't need as much of a refrigeration all the time. So but, I guess you can do it. Uh, yeah. What do, like, what do we do? You just roll the- <laughs> like, what but here's doing? a lot of like, people. Well, but we're like all trying to cast the blame here. You know, it's like, well, like so Zach, no it's your fault. Pizza? Well, no, there's not like Zach, it's your fault for not checking the oven. And I'm like, dude, who puts a unused pizza in the oven? And so we're like asking all our, our friends and it's literally a 50, 50 split. Like who's now, that someone fault? just tuning in. They're like, what's wrong with putting pizza in the oven, storing it there, like storing it. leftover pizza. Instead of putting it in the fridge, you put it in the oven, you just sit it in there in the box. So, okay. Then the question becomes who's at fault Zach for not making sure the oven was empty when he was preheating it or the roommates for just throwing pizza boxes in the oven. I think it's a household fault. You, so everybody's, everybody's a fault? Everybody's punished. I, Everybody. I, I, oh, man, Zach. I, 
Dude, you know what? Randall might have something on here, bro. What he say? You think the guy who almost burnt down the house with tissues oh, would be more cautious? Didn't you do that? Was you that would you? think that. Yeah. Zach had a, a I am impressed. Problem. We've got a long time listener here. I forgot about that. You did almost burn the place down with your tissues. Yeah, maybe, but that maybe it's your thing. It is, you know, I'm just a pyromaniac. What can I say? You just need to be more aware of what's going on. Zach, Zach, he's a pyromaniac. <laughs> Zach, that could be your new thing, dude. I'll add it to the show. Living the pyromaniac dream. Boom. Uh, um, I think you just need to have, you know, I guess everybody just is now on level playing field. And now from now on, you need to have your rules. So it's like, are you going to let them store pizza in there or not? I We used to have a thing where they would announce it like, hey, I'm storing pizza in the oven. Make sure, you know, this is So this happening. is a thing. Oh, like, yeah. Well, I think that's like they grew up doing that. And me, the oven was just off limits. You use it to, you know. Cook. Cook, you know, you're heating up to 400, 450 degrees. You don't put anything in there. And other people are like, oh, yeah, it's just what we do. Oh, okay, here we go. Beth says, we kept several Ziploc bags full of Christmas cookies in our oven last year to keep the cat away from them. Apparently and tr- cats <laughs> eating cookies are a thing, too. And cats are living good, right? Well, and the cat doesn't want to go in the oven. Oh. Turn the oven on. A pizza box is much more desirable to Aww. melted plastic over the grates. That must yeah. have been a mess. Yep, I mm. feel that. So... When you have roommates, that's how it goes. I, it's a learning curve. I don't store things in the oven. just to, because I don't either. I just want to let you but know. But you have plenty of room in your fridge. If you didn't have enough room, maybe you would. Uh, no, because the oven is a hot place. You don't put things in there. <laughs> what, if it, what if it turns on? Are you going to unplug the oven? <laughs> there are a lot of things I'm not conscientious about, but you know what? That's one. Better not to put anything in there. Yeah. This was the worst of the riots, and we'd like to congratulate you on having the stomach to stick around to the very end. The riot exists because Radio U exists, and Radio U only exists because of your support. Find out more and give now at RadioU.com slash donate. Nikki and I humiliate ourselves daily. We didn't get a car out of it.